Hey everybody, and welcome back. So we're just about ready to start cutting some segments. Uh, first thing we need to do though is figure out what angle we need to cut them at. So if we look at a circle, a circle contains 360 degrees. So in order to figure out what angle we cut them at, we simply take the number of sides, and if you recall in the last video, we're making a 12-sided bowl. So we simply take 12, and we divide that into 360. Now that comes out to 30, but what that basically means is that the connection point between each of these pieces is 30 degrees. So this little angle here is 30, 30, and so on. So what we actually have to do is bisect that angle. In other words, cut it in half. So each one of these is cut at 15 degrees on either side. Now that sounds a little confusing, but if we look at a picture frame, it's a little easier to understand. Uh, of course, this angle is 90 degrees, but we don't cut it at 90, we cut it at 45 on either side, and of course that produces a 90 degree angle. So looking at an eight-sided piece, eight will go into 360 45 times. So we take 45, divide that by two, and it's 22 and a half. And uh, again, I know it sounds a little confusing, but basically just look at it like this. Take 360, take the number of pieces and divide that into 360, and then take that number and simply divide it by 2. And that will give you your angle. And with that information, we're ready to cut. Okay, so what I did is I, I made some test cuts at our 15 degree angle to make sure that we have indeed a 15 degree angle. And uh, again, you know, if you're off the tiniest little bit, by the time you make 12 pieces, which are cut on both sides, so 24 cuts, the cumulative error really adds up and you, you wind up with a large gap on uh, you know at the end when you try to put the last piece in. So accuracy of course is essential. Um, so actually I made some test cuts uh, with my first setting and they actually look pretty good to me. I got lucky this time. Um, but you know it's, it, if you don't get it the first time you know spend a little bit extra time and a little extra wood and go ahead and try and get it as absolutely as close as possible. And uh, you know, don't think of this as wasting wood because I saved these. This was just scrap material, but I saved these. I throw them aside, and you know, on down the road, I'll look through my scrap bin, and you know, I'll use this for something. So don't don't think of it as waste because again, you can use it. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to show you the setup again and show you how we're going to start making these initial cuts. So let's get going. Now, getting back to our sled. A few things I want to point out. Uh, I'm going to start with the lignum vitae, which was uh, the top and the bottom. This is going to actually be the top. And the process is going to be to first make our initial cut. So with the toggle clamp up, we'll push the sled through, make an initial cut. Then every cut after that, we simply flip it over and we'll push it over to the stop. Now the toggle clamp here is mounted on a thicker piece of stock and that's to allow for the movement. That way I don't have to screw this down in various positions and of course ultimately uh, ruin the sled. So with the little plunger here uh, screwed out as far as it'll go, it still wasn't far enough. So what I did was I took a, a eighth inch piece of uh, some scrap material that I had and just used some double stick tape and that way it'll securely lock down every time and hold the pieces uh, in place. So uh, I'm going to set the uh, sled up and we're going to make our first cut and uh, we're going to knock out some segments. So I've got the sled set up to make our first set of segments. And the way I did that <clears throat> was going back to my plan and I seen that the length on the first uh, layer of, of segments here is 2.64 and of course that's in a uh, metric form but if you convert it back over to inches that's going to be two and five eighths give or take uh, this is actually about fifteen thousandths of an inch over uh, five eighths but again that's pretty close so what I've done is made a line set my fence and I've got it set to where I basically just leave the line and that should compensate and again we have we've built in some playroom. That's why you know each one of these segments is a little bit past you know what it actually needs to be. So that way we got a little bit of wiggle room 
to get us going. So what I'm going to do is start cutting these segments and I'm going to leave the camera rolling and so that way you can get a feel for the whole process. Now you can really see the purpose of this toggle clamp. The fence, uh, you know, obviously does not go past where the cut is, so this piece is completely unsupported. Without a toggle clamp, there really is just no safe way of doing this. Now you could certainly extend this fence, you know, past the cut, and that would lend support. However, the fence would have to be much wider because, as you can see, the blade is still coming past uh, you know where this fence is so the fence would have to be very wide in order not to cut it in half and even if you had all that you would still need a toggle clamp so just for ease of operation I you know simply omitted that and when I made my first cut it, it basically made almost like a zero clearance cut on the fence here so of course that helps with uh, with chip out the other thing I want to point out is you'll notice when I when I bring my sled back and uh, you know unclamp a piece and then push the other piece up the saw is still running but as you can see I bring it back far enough and this piece here which is uh, you know essentially the bridge it also acts as a safety uh, even though I don't get my hands anywhere near that if for some reason I just happen to slip at least I've got a little bit of safety there so again very important piece does double duty and uh, your hands will thank you so with the lignum vitae out of the way, we're ready to start cutting the walnut. Now, if we look back at our original chart here, we can see that the first two layers, one being the lignum vitae, the second being the walnut, actually have the same length measurement. Okay, so you may be wondering why I didn't cut those at the same time, uh, or of course one right after the other, uh, and two reasons. First reason being, if you recall, uh, the lignum vitae was a half inch so I had to shim the bottom of this so I didn't want to mess with that setup but actually the other reason is even though they're the same overall length the stop block has to be moved and the reason for that is because we're dealing with wider stock uh, and if we were to leave the stop block in the same position our segments would have come out completely different even though you know, it worked for one setup. It's not going to work if you are changing the width. If this width and the lignum vitae width were the same, then yeah, you could cut them and, you know, everything would be fine. But because of that, we had to readjust the uh, fence, but uh, we're ready to start cutting some walnut. Well, after about 10 minutes worth of uh, cutting, we've got all our pieces ready to go. And the cut time really isn't that long. It, uh, of course, it's the setup time, which is pretty indicative of uh, most woodworking projects. It always takes longer to set something up than actually to, uh, to do the job of the cutting. So with a few adjustments to both the toggle as well as the stop block, we've got everything ready to go, and we're going to move on to the next step.